welcome to my channel. This is my first ever actual finished video that um, is actually educational and has some good information in it, aside from my intro intro video. So today I'm going to be covering hamsters and how to care for them, all the things that they need, and any information that I have that would be helpful to somebody that is trying to become a first time hamster pet owner. So I have had Oh gosh, so many hamsters actually, I can't even think of how many right now, but I've had strictly Syrian hamsters, so the first thing that you want to do is decide actually what kind of hamster you want. Do you want a robo, a dwarf, a Syrian? Um, there's a lot of different kinds, so just doing your research to know which type is going to be the right one for you is going to be definitely a benefit for you because they are all different. They all have different personality traits, they all have different attributes, so it's something that you want to at least do your research on. I personally like Syrians because they are bigger, which is nice for me. Um, the smaller ones tend to be a little bit more hyperactive in my opinion. Um, they're not quite as easy to tame, and I just, they, they haven't been something that I've ever been able to bond with. So Syrians are definitely the ones that I like and prefer better. They are solitary, so they cannot be housed with any other hamsters. They will fight. It can be fatal, so I would not, 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 absolutely do not do that. Um, the robos and the dwarf hamsters can live in colonies. Um, in the wild, they kind of do that. So it is something that you can do. Is it something I would advise? That's a little iffy. Um, typically, if you have more than one animal in an enclosure together, it's going to bond with that other animal instead of you, so that is something that you definitely want to keep in mind as well. If you want this hamster to be your friend and your friend only be, you know, bonded to you, it needs to only spend time with you. Um, and also it helps to tame a little bit quicker, not so much aggression because they aren't thinking that you're trying to step into their family. Um, and then, so cost is obviously something that you want to also take into account. So. Yeah, hamsters look like this cheap little animal that you can just take and discard if, if need be. They are not that. They are not a toy. They are not an inanimate object. They are a living thing. They do need to be respected. They do need to be cared for. And it is not something that is super cheap. No animal should be cheap. If it's cheap, you should not have it because no animal should be treated that way. They should be provided for and adequately. So hamsters typically cost anywhere from 10 to $20 uh, for just the hamster. I added it up and it's it's on average about $200 to actually get started started. And that is including your proper size of kit, um, kennel, cage, however you want to go about that. Um, I use tanks, uh, which, you know, aquariums. So those, I believe, give you a little bit more bang for your buck. You get more space for less money. Um, they're easier to clean. You don't have bars that you have to wipe down and they are also safer for the animals. They're not gonna be doing bar biting. They're not going to escape. They're not going to get themselves caught between the bars. Um, and again, usually the cages that are wired are typically not made for hamsters. They're made to look like they're for hamsters. Hi, Bailey, sorry. Um, but they are not the appropriate size for a hamster. They are usually like, the size of six hamsters and that's about it. That's all they can house. So, hi baby. <laughs> Sorry, he's a mama's boy. Um, so definitely invest in space. My hamsters currently reside in two 40 gallon fish tanks each. Um, I am going to be uh, making a new enclosure for them with a divider in the middle so that it is even bigger and I think I'm going to be trying plexiglass because um, I've looked at the wood ones, not super easy to clean, don't want to mess with that. So first thing first is definitely get your cage. Um, you have to have that regardless. You're not going to take home an animal and not have somewhere to put it. So that's the first thing you need to invest in. That is the most expensive thing that you're going to have to invest in as well. But it is a one-time purchase. You don't have to continue to buy it like food or bedding. So it is a lot in the beginning, but when is it ever going to like break down? It doesn't so it's something that you can use <clears throat> in the future or for the rest of your life um, so that's definitely a nice thing as well uh, then secondly would be food obviously you have to feed this animal so a lot of pet stores have um, prepackaged uh, gerbil or hamster food that's already 
a mix of different sor sorts of seeds and nuts and just grains, things that they need in their diet. The variety is the best. So I would not get the little pellets or the kibble. Um, for one, that's just boring. And two, it usually doesn't have the variety of fiber that they need for their diet. So I do use a little bit of that um, mixed in with my seed mix. So they get a good variety of food. It's not boring for them and it's, you know, actually good and healthy for them gives them all the right things that they need. Um, and treats, you know, you wanna have some treats, you wanna have some variety there too, so definitely invest in a few treats. Uh, they can also have some uh, fruits and veggies, making sure that that is not um, any sort of citrus uh, fruit, no limes, oranges, nothing like that. Um, they cannot have, handle that acid. Um, and usually things that are high in vitamin C, you don't wanna give to them. However, they do need vitamin C, so they do make uh, some water drops that you can get, some uh, vitamin C drops. So I would definitely recommend getting those as well um, because they do need that in their diet. They just cannot get it from the acidic foods that we eat. Um, and also, I wouldn't give them a lot of just fat foods. So if it's something that's junk food to you, it's junk food to them. It's not good for their body, just the same as it's not good for ours. So I give mine a lot of like apples, broccoli. They love broccoli. Um, they can have celery. They... They like bananas, they do like strawberries um, at a limit. They cannot have a ton of those. Um, they do eat a little bit of uh, boiled egg. Um, I do give them cheese, but I, you know, manage it. Make sure that it's not a ton of treats all the time. I usually go by the like 10 to 20% range on their diet in terms of treats. Um, and then water, they have to have a water bottle. I definitely recommend doing a bottle instead of a dish. Dishes are just not the right simulation of what they would get in the wild. In the wild, they're going to be getting their water out of like droplets on leaves. And usually they're not gonna go to a raging rapid like river and get a drink. They're this small. So it's not something that they can safely do. So they're used to finding droplets out in the wild. Um, the water bottle simulates that, so they're getting a droplet, um, and so that is definitely the safest way, and it's also going to help you not have any room to grow bacteria or just get dirty water. That's not good for them to drink, um, and even if you're changing it every day, they can potty in it. They, It's just not very safe, and they can also spill it, and then they're without water all day, and that's not good either. So I definitely would go for the bottle. Um, you can get bottles that uh, are glass. I would recommend the glass because plastic harbors bacteria and again, just not good for them. You do need to be cleaning out your bottle every day or every other day um, in the nozzle, shaking that out, making sure that the stuff is not gunked up and built up in there. You do not want them to be drinking out of a dirty water bottle that's just gonna make them get ill and possibly um, could be fatal. So you definitely want to watch that and change their water every day. Honestly, that's the best way to do it. Some people do it every other day. That's okay. Um, they cannot sit there with one bottle of water that's stagnant water for a week, uh, you know, or more. That's not okay. I mean, you wouldn't drink a water, a glass of water that's been sitting on the coffee table for 10 days. It's disgusting. It has grown bacteria. It has grown germs. There are things living in there microorganisms that you cannot see but your gut will feel same with hamsters so no bueno definitely make sure that you keep that clean um just like you would want and then bedding so bedding is huge um this is something that a lot of people are not educated on a lot of people go straight to the wood because that is what is marketed most um it's the cheapest most readily available it is the worst thing you can give to your hamster one it is incredibly hard on the respiratory system all of that dust is just not okay for them um, they are tiny, tiny creatures. And two, anything that's not aspen is toxic. So pine, uh, cedar, all of that stuff is not okay for them. The oils are really, really bad um, on their coat. It can cause them to bald. It can cause a lot of issues and it can cause allergic reactions. And that's not comfortable either. Um, and it doesn't absorb. It doesn't absorb the potty. So you're going to have potty sitting on top of it that um, is obviously odorous so you're going to feel like you're changing it a lot more which you are so a you're 
just spending the same amount of money as you would if you bought the right stuff. Um, personally, I use Katie uh, Clean and Cozy. That's the it's white. It's easy to see where what quarter they've chosen to designate for their body, um, and it lets me definitely see if there's anything growing in there, if there's bugs, if there's mites, um, which would never happen in my <laughs> situation. Um, but it's just the safest way to go about it. It's the easiest to clean, easiest to see, and it's comfortable for them. It's not cotton, so it's not going to get stuck in their cheek pouches, um, and it, it helps to absorb the odor, it helps to absorb the potty, so you're not going to have to clean it as often um, because you know where the potty's at, so you just get that corner. Um, and then also, it helps to keep them warm. They are very tiny creatures, again, so they cannot regulate the same amount of heat that we can. They need um, somewhere that they can kind of make a nest and keep them warm, and that's going to be definitely better than wood also. And you're going to save money in the long run. It looks like a uh, I mean, it's a big bag, but it expands like five times as big once you fluff it up. So even better. Um, it lasts a really long time. And in terms of bedding and all that stuff, cage cleaning is definitely something that you need to research. Do your no get, get your knowledge. Um, you do not want to completely clean out their cage. That is really stressful for them, and they have no scent left in there of their own. So they're going to feel unfamiliar with the, the area, and it is going to just... Be really hard on them. Hamsters can get wet tail from stress. It's a intestinal bacteria issue that nine times out of ten is fatal, uh, like that. So we don't want to stress the hamsters out. So don't clean the cage when the hamsters in the cage, and do not fully clean the hamsters cage ever. Uh, do I typically do a spot clean once a week? Uh, I clean out their potty corner, and if there is a tree area that gets a little dirty, I clean that out as well. Anything that looks dirty, which is why I like the white. Um, and then I leave all the rest of that in there and just add to it. I do a full clean uh, once a month, and that's usually like 75% of the bedding comes out. I still leave what looks clean, uh, usually about 25% of it, and then I add all the rest as new, mixing it in with that old so that it still smells like my hamster and he is not stressed out like he's never been here before. Hamsters have extremely poor eyesight, so they rely on their senses of hearing and smell. So smell is a huge, huge thing to them. Wash your hands before you hold your hamsters. Um, if there's food or any other animal scent on them, they might be afraid, they might bite you, they might um, mistake you for food. So definitely they, they need to become acquainted with your scent and your sound and go slow. Hamsters, again, have poor eyesight, so they are very jumpy. They do not see you approaching them. They do not see you about to pick them up. Um, and that can cause stress and it can cause aggression. So just be slow, be understanding. Know that this thing is the size of your palm and adjust accordingly. Um, so you want to make sure that your hamster has a little hideout or a hut or a igloo or something to sleep in so that they feel safe and that they can hide under so that they feel like nobody can see them and they feel comfortable enough and pr protected enough to sleep uh, safely and happily and stress-free. Um, you also want to make sure that your hamster has a wheel they all need wheels. They run about eight miles a day in the wild, so they need something to let out that energy. They need to do that. That is huge for their brain activity as well as their physical health. Um, make sure that you have the right size of wheel. That is huge. You do not want to get a wheel that is too small because it is going to kink up their back, and it's obviously, your if your back was kinked up all the time, it would hurt. It would cause issues um, and that can lead to aggression or lead to poor health, um, which can lead to early onset death. So it's something that you just want to just care, care, take the time, do do your research, care. Hi, Bailey. My cat's getting mad because I'm ignoring him. <laughs> um, and also get them a ball. Um, again, the right size. Usually a Syrian hamster needs a ball and a wheel that are at least eight inches. Um, my play wheel is like 12 inches. It's very, very large. Um, that's in their playpen. And then they have, I think, an 8-inch wheel in both of their cages. And their balls are, I think, an 8-inch as well. So gives them the right amount of space to where they can run still at a horizontal. And it's not hard on their spine. Um, and then just toys. They have to have toys. They have to have stimulation. Just like anybody else, we need things to do. Keep us busy. 
and they also do have teeth that never stop growing. So um, you any any rodent has teeth that never stop growing. So if they don't have anything to file that down on or anything to chew, then their teeth are going to continue to grow and wrap up on inside of their mouths and make it to where they can't eat and it could lead to death. I mean, obviously, if you cannot eat, you are not going to live very long, um, as well as it can get up inside of their skull. I mean, it's, it's, it's a serious, huge issue, something that you is so easily prevented. Do your research, again. Um, so hamsters are very, very sweet, very, they really like to have an owner that they can bond with and you are their best friend. So be patient when taming them, be understanding, know that they are afraid. When you bring your hamster home for the first day, do not automatically try and play with them. Have your cage and everything set up whenever you bring them home, you're going to let them out into that. Don't leave them in the case or anything like that. Just slowly just let them right right into their cage everything needs to be set up so that it is not just minimize the stress because again wet tail is an issue usually you get sent home with wet tail drops from any place that you're going to buy a hamster if you do not buy them please um prevent rather than treat because treatment nine times out of ten is not going to work in this case so when you do get them home let them out um they're going to hide immediately they're going to go and hide they're scared they don't know where they are um, leave them alone. Do not take them out of the cage for two days. Um, some people have a different opinion on that. Some might say a couple hours, some might say half a day, some might say a day. I, I typically like to go two days. That lets the hamster acclimate to its environment and that lets the hamster get its scent over everything. That lets the hamster know where everything's at and, and not be afraid of where it's at right now. It lets it become its own territory and its house and it lets it also get acclimated to the sounds and smells of your house that it is inside of. So just give them some time, be patient. This is a big deal to them. This is a huge life change. So they, they need that time and you need to respect that as well. When you do start to try to interact with your hamster, go slow again. So don't automatically go in there and pick up your hamster. That's a, that looks like a predator that you're going to scare them, especially if you come in straight from the top that's just like in the wild, something coming down to attack them and kill them. So start out with putting your hand into the cage and just letting it lay there. If the hamster does not approach it, that's okay. It eventually will catch a whiff of your scent and it's going to slowly get it comfortable and aware of who you are. Um, you can try leaving a treat in your hand when you lower it into the cage. Um, sometimes they might come out and get it. It just takes time and I would not try and rush it. Uh, let your hamster come to you. Do not go to the hamster because that's just going to make it a lot longer before the hamster is going to trust you. So when that hamster finally does come to you and does take that treat out of your hand or comes to smell your hand, don't move very quickly. Don't try to grab your hamster. Let them get your smell and slowly, eventually, once you have a treat in your hand, they will eventually decide to walk up into your hand. They will start to trust you and slowly you can start to try and pull them out talking very softly um, you can just be very careful they are very quick and they are very fearful so they might jump out of your hand um, and they are tiny so that I've seen it before at pet stores where it's broken hamsters backs legs anything and it's just that's very very unfortunate because it can be prevented um, so definitely take your time um, and eventually your hamster is gonna love you mine anytime they hear me in the in that room and they are awake for the night um they automatically come out and they're like let me out let me out i lower my hand in there and i can't even get it low enough like my my male especially he jumps right up in it and starts crawling up my arm like okay it's playtime so they definitely know that and also don't leave them in their cage just to die for the rest of their life that's terrible that'd be like locked in a cage like in prison so every night i let my hamsters out um they don't play together because they go into heat every four days. We don't want to breed. Um, but I do pull them out separately and they both get at least an hour of playtime. Some people, especially in the beginning, start slow, like 10, 15, 20, you know, work your way up. Um, my guys, they can't get enough playtime. I could let them out for 10 hours straight and they'd still want to play. Not really, but you know what I mean. Um, so just let them be happy, give them all the things that they need, um, give them all the things that they want. They, 
your their whole entire life depends on what you give them they do not have anything unless it is given to them by you so keep that in mind they can't go out and find the things that they want or need so they rely on you for the rest of their life they never grow up they're like kids but they never grow up so if this is something that you want to take on as your pet um be knowledgeable get your things prepared before you get the pet um and they are not disposable just because they're cheap and small they are not disposable so if you guys have any questions you can leave them in the comments below or um any comments that's cool too um i hope that you enjoyed this video and if there's anything that you need help with or need some information about don't hesitate to let me know you can also subscribe i'm hopefully going to be posting videos more often um, and about a range of topics on different animals animals i've owned animals that i'm knowledgeable of i work at a pet store and i've had every animal in it plus some more um, throughout my life so i definitely have taken the time to do the research and i would like to share that information with others so that they can provide the right lifestyle for their animals and help animals have a better and happier life i feel like that is something that should be encouraged and should be shared so um thank you guys for watching thank you guys for checking out my channel and checking out my video um i super super hope to see you guys in the next one and thanks again